Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head to Belgium once again and we're going to revisit quite a well known and quite recognised brewery but we're going to have a taste of one of their more recent releases which seems to have been generating a good bit of hype actually and I'm very curious to see how this beer turns out. So we're going to go back to Brindon which is home to Brauerei Duvel Mertgat and we're having a taste of the new version of the Duvel Triple Hop. This particular version uses the Cashmere Hop which comes from America, I believe back in 2013 it was released and uh, it's supposed to give you some really nice lemon, limey and melon flavours. I've only ever had one IPA that had this in it before and that was from, it was called the Cashmere actually from uh, Green Gold Brewing in Slovenia and that was a lovely, lovely IPA this one so I really hope uh, this is going to be a nice beer and I'm really curious curious actually to see how this hop turns out in a Belgian style beer too. So really looking forward to this one and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Devel Mertgart before. No doubt there will be some more in the near future. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries, there is one there for all the Belgian beers that I've reviewed for you, that's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Brown so Brauerei Devel Mertgat, as I mentioned to you, um, is a small Flemish family owned brewery and it was founded back in 1871 by Jan Leonard Mertgat who came from a family of brewers from Steenhoefel and the company is based in Brindon in Belgium which is a small town of only 3,000 people halfway between Brussels and Antwerp. But in 1970s, or in the 1970s, the company was struggling financially and so to make ends meet they actually brewed and bottled two borey beer from Denmark and this helped them create the large distribution networks that benefited the Duvel Brewery later on but thankfully since then the company has gone on to be very successful and they actually own shares uh, or own outright a number of other breweries so um, they were also an investor in the Omegang Brewery in Cooperstown in New York they purchased Brasserie de Schuf and the Deconic Brewery in 2006 and 2010 respectively and in 2014 they also acquired Boulevard Brewing in Kansas City Missouri in America and the following year in 2015 they purchased Firestone Walker which I believe is Paso Robles in California too. You've seen me review a number of their beers in uh, in recent times. So a brewery that does have quite a, a good portfolio of other things underneath it, but from what I gather, they do let these other breweries, if you like, do their own thing and maintain their own business and stuff. So really quite cool in that regard, I have to say, that they're not coming in and just taking over. It's more like a case of lending expertise and lending distribution networks and stuff like that. And that really has helped the Firestone Walker beers get out there a little bit more than they were previously. But obviously with Duvel Murkgaard, the flagship beer is the Duvel beer, and this is exported over to more than 40 different countries worldwide. The word from the word Duvel actually translates into English as devil from Brabantian, which is the Ghent and Antwerp dialects of Dutch, but the standard Dutch word is actually Duvel. But this beer, the original beer, was originally brewed under the moniker Victory Ale in the 1920s to commemorate the end of the First World War. But an avid drinker, drinker apparently described it as non echt in Duvel, a real devil basically, and perhaps this reference, it was a reference to the ABV, you know, it was 9.5%, which is, you know, pretty monstrous actually but this meant that the name was changed officially to Duvel beer and it's stuck ever since but this uh, the original beer is brewed with Pilsner malt and dextrose and it's hot with sats and styrian goldings and the yeast strain apparently comes from an original culture of Scottish yeast that was bought by Albert Murkgat uh, during a business uh, tour to Scotland just after the war actually so this beer the Duvel beers do have a little bit of a Scottish connection which always makes them a little bit special to me of course um, but yeah this one is basically that original beer but just with a little bit of a uh, cashmere hop added to it so um, or a hell of a lot of cashmere hop added to it I'm not quite sure at the moment but yeah that's all you really need to know about Duvel Merck got a really uh, nice company this one that um, they're, they're kind of interesting in that way they stick to brewing one main beer and uh, they do little experiments with it and things like that so definitely one of the more recognizable 
Belgian breweries, in fact. And uh, you can't really go wrong with a Duvel. You know, Duvel and Leffe and things like that, you have got these certain, these beers from Belgium that are definitely go-tos. And Duvel, for me, um, is one that I like to have every so often. It's very rare that I drink the, the same beer more than once, to be honest with you. I always like trying different things. But um, Duvel, you know, I have had that a couple of times, I have to say. But yeah, that's all you really need to know about the brewery just now. If you want to learn a little bit more, of course, you can check out the brewery website in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook and things like that and Instagram and that'll keep you up to date with all the latest goings on there. But yeah, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself then. So as I mentioned at the start of the video, this one comes in at 9.5%. I guess you could describe this one as being a Belgian strong golden ale and it's basically the original Duvel beer with a bit of cashmere hop added to it. So just to tell you about the cashmere hop, this is an American hop as I mentioned too. It was developed by Washington State University. It was released back in 2013 and it's a crossbreed between Cascade and Northern Brewer and it gives you aromas and flavours of lemon, lime and also melon too. I've had one IPA as I mentioned uh, that I've had this beer in before and it is pretty damn nice. But now we can get rid of the brewery notes and we can actually focus on tasting this beer then. So I'll just let you have a look at the artwork of this one before we open up. Very similar to what you would get from the regular uh, triple hops. As far as I know I think there's be I've got a feeling, I know there's definitely been a Citra and an Amarillo uh, triple hop one. I think this might be the fourth. I've got a feeling they maybe did a um, a Simcoe one as well, but it would be cool to try the others right enough. But there you can see, um, there's the standard triple hop um, bottle cap on this one. It tells you a little bit on the back. Um, introducing cashmere, this highly sought after newcomer to the world of hops uh, enriches uh, an already unique palette with refreshing notes of citrus, peach, melon and tropical coconut. So um, yeah, it should be cool. And as you can see, little limited edition stamp on the side of the bottle there too, which is nice. So let's get this guy out then and we'll get on with the tasting. I'm really curious to see how this one turns out. Incidentally, for those of you watching in Sweden, this beer was released on the 3rd of May 2019 through the small parties in Seistenbolaget and it does seem to be actually and um, I did notice in the shop in Landskrona that they had a hell of a lot of them so I think they, they have a hell of a lot, a lot of this beer in but it is a limited edition so if you want to try this one buy it up as soon as you can. You guys will be seeing this video just about a week after this beer was originally released actually. So yeah, as you can see with this beer, it's poured a lovely um, hazy golden colour. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head there. You can see there's a solid finger of a frothy, I would say pure white head, but the head is a little bit more bumpy towards the, the top of that beer there. If I put my fingers behind it, you can see that it is nice and hazy, but definitely pale golden straw colour, not too far away from the, the colour of the original Duvel, if I remember right. I thought the original Duvel was a little bit more orangey than this right enough, but it could well be that I've just uh, forgotten. But you know, it looks like a lovely kind of bright, light Belgian beer, this one, and the head actually has just gotten gradually more bumpy. But yeah, nothing particularly surprising about this one when you consider um, the original Duvel. Actually, I just remember the original Duvel being a little bit darker than this. But as soon as you open this beer up, you do smell a little bit of the Pilsner malt coming out at you. It's got that sort of light, airy, kind of bready, crisp type thing that you'll get from Pilsner malt, actually. But yeah, it looks really nice. So let's take a closer look at that aroma and just see how we get on then. Mmm. So yeah, with this beer, straight away, um, this one I think leans more towards the malty side of things, but it's also got a good little bit of hoppy character as well. Um, so you can pick up the nice kind of smooth, white bready, wheaty base to this one. You can smell some of the more yeasty qualities. Belgian beer, of course, is very, very focused on the yeasty side of the beer. So you pick that up right away. There's a little bit of a grainy and biscuity um, note to the... Um, to the malt base as well, which I think is really nice. Um, so there is a degree of sweetness to this one. But yeah, um, definitely white bready, wheaty kind of characteristics. Definitely a little bit of pale, kind of pale and pilsner malty notes coming out of this one too. A little bit of a, a biscuit sweetness and there's definitely a sort of grainy note to this beer. It almost smells a little touch kind of soapy or something like that, which is interesting. But yeah, um, on the hoppy side of things, you can definitely pick up those sort of um, noble hoppy qualities coming out of this one. You know, the Sats hop is very similar 
uh, this, the Sats Hop, and is it Styrian Goldings is the other one? Yeah, Sats Hop and Styrian Goldings. You know, these are very similar in their profile to the German hops, the Noble hops, that the Hallertau and the Tintnanger and things like that. They've got this very distinctive sort of floral aromaticity to them, almost a little touch. Um, the, I found that the Styrian Golding is almost a little touch herbal, actually, which is interesting. Um, but yeah... Um, you really can pick up that, the, the sort of floral aromatic qualities of this beer. There's a little bit of the lighter grassy note in there and that typical kind of almost lemony citrus too. But the um, with the cashmere, the lemon limey qualities I think are coming out of this. You can smell a good bit of lime. I'm not getting too much in the way of melon though. There's a little bit of it, but it's not too prominent. And I think I did say the same about the cashmere before. Um, cashmere from what I gather it's not I mean it obviously depends on how much you use but it's not the punchiest of hops in terms of its aroma it's more its flavor where it does the talking actually but to me this beer um, to be honest with you from what I remember it doesn't smell all that different from the original Duvel I mean there is a little bit of a melony quality in there a little bit of a limey note but other than that the aroma of this one is very, very similar to the original Duvel, but I guess when you've got a hop like Citra, which is mangoes and a little bit of grapefruit sometimes and, th and, and things like that that can be very complex, you're going to notice the difference a little bit more than this hop where it's, it's lemon and limey, which can kind of blend in a bit with some of the esters that you'll get from the... The um the hop the the traditional hops if you like like the Sats and the uh, the Styrian Goldings from Slovenia, um but yeah um as I say take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of this one but I will say I find the aroma of this one very similar to uh, to the original Duvel but I'm sure the flavour will have some really interesting things in there it's quite a highly rated beer this incidentally I think it was sitting around three point eight on Untapped and it was ninety six when I checked it out on uh, Rate Beer earlier as well but yeah let's get stuck into this one then very curious to see how this turns out. So this one is the Triple Hop Cashmere, a limited edition version of the Duvel from Brauerei Duvel Murkat in, the, in the Belgium. Let's get stuck into this one. Slange, Skull, Proust, Salty. Oh, Yeah. That's quite nice. The first thing I'm thinking about this beer though is the carbonation is a little bit active in this one. So take a few sips of it before you start thinking too much about this beer. Yeah. I'm going to say with this one straight away a big thumbs up to the guys. At um, Duvel Murgart from this one. Um, I've always found Duvel to be really nicely balanced, actually. You know, it does have that big malty and yeasty backbone that you want of a Belgian beer. And it does become a little bit sweeter, um, but it does have that um, kind of kick to it, if you like. It does have that little bit of a bitter snap to it that gives you the kind of freshness and crispness that you also want from like a blonde beer or something like that. I've always found that, that thing, that perspective about Belgian brewing quite interesting actually because you do want to have a balance between drinkability and also having those big flavours that um, Belgian beer is renowned for. But yeah, this is really nice. So, middle of your palate then, you can feel that sort of malty base there, that sort of pale malty base, that blankets the middle of your tongue. It's actually a little bit sweet there. The yeasty side of the beer is making it a little bit sweet. But if you come further forward on the palate, you can feel the more crisp aspects of the malt base too. It's definitely got a little bit of that more pilsnery malt crispness towards the front of the tongue. And I like how um, how that kind of goes together in this particular beer. So just pay attention to that. Um, for the the further that you go into it, um, you will notice that, and that that suit that marches up quite well actually, with the sort of floral side of the hops. It, it really is um, very nice how that goes together. This just gives that beer a nice crisp, um, drinkable backbone actually. So yeah, I like how this one's going together. I really do. Um, so yeah, the malt base in that sense is quite simple, just a little bit of pale malt for me and a little bit of a, a kind of Pilsner quality to it. But I wouldn't be surprised if this is all Pilsner malt, to be honest with you, because it is, you know, it does come across as very crisp. I mean, I've forgotten actually how crisp the um, 
the original Duvel is, to be honest. And you wouldn't expect that so much from a beer that's 9.5%. Um, but yeah, in the middle of your palate, then, you can feel the slightly thicker, doughy, bready, yeasty esters in there. It's got a nice kind of wheaty um, quality to it. There's a bit of biscuit in there as well. Um, and I don't know, there's maybe a little touch of that typical, you know, kind of banana, clovey sort of spice flavour. There is a little bit of that in this one, but it's not um, it's not overly prominent as you're going to get in some of the like the wit beers and the uh, and some of the blondes and things like that, actually. It's just got a nice level. Uh, it just adds a nice little bit of complexity to the originally bready base of the beer, actually. So there's a lot of things kind of blended in in the middle of the palate there as well, which is quite nice. But yeah, I like how um, I do like how this one's going together. I'm finding that the more and more I drink of this one, the slightly sweeter that malt base gets. You can really feel it smoothing out, uh, smoothing out, and you start to get the um, the nice kind of the more biscuity sweetness out of it as well. When you go further into the aftertaste, it's the yeasty qualities, the doughy kind of wheaty bready yeast kind of notes that are in there, and also some of the biscuity sweetness as well. Um, which is good. It's just merging together very, very nicely. Um, on the hoppy side of things, then I guess this is where we should move. We'll come to the fruitiness at the end because obviously that's where the point of interest is in this beer particularly. But um, on the hoppy side of things, then back corners of the palate, you've got a nice little bit. Of, uh, of earthiness there and as you come further forward from that the earthiness isn't there for far too long and it's quite a typical um, earthiness uh, I've always found the noble hops just have a little bit of sweetness to them and that includes the sats and the styrian uh, goldings to be honest with you you can feel that little bit of an almost slightly sweet earthiness but as soon as you come forward from that it's actually a little bit spicy and floral I think and I've got a feeling that might be the cashmere but as you move further forward that spiciness does linger there but I find it drops off a little bit and becomes much more of a kind of noble, um, a bit of a more noble floral quality actually. And then round the very front curve of the palate, you feel that lighter kind of uh, grassiness in there, which is pretty mm. good actually. But yeah, the way the 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 way that the hops just have that nice freshness to them is, uh, is really quite nice. I do like how crisp this beer is. I'd actually really forgotten that about uh, Duvel. Um, but yeah, it really goes together quite nicely, I have to say. So again, this beer gets a big thumbs up from me. Um, and behind the front curve of the palate, of course, as I always say, that's where you get that nice oily bubble from the juicy, fruity esters. And this is where the real point of interest in this beer is. So, with this beer then, definitely to me, it really has a strong lemony presence. If you go right to the back of that oily bubble, it's really lemony, I think. And as you come further forward, then that's when it starts to evolve into, um, it starts to have a little bit more of a melony quality. I think the melons and the limey flavours in this one are uh, kind of merging together a little bit and just mixing in. You can really feel that a bit. It, right on the front tip of your tongue, that's where the more kind of grassy lemony esters come out. But the sharper lemony notes, I think, come out towards the back of that slightly oily bubble that you have. But then, yeah, limey, melony flavours in front of that. I want to say that the melon is a little bit more in the middle of there, but then the lime comes out a bit more towards the front, I think. And then on the very tip of your tongue, it's the kind of grassy notes. They were saying on the bottle of peach, um, I can see why they might say that. It almost tastes a bit peachy around the edge of the tongue. I've always found peach to be a little bit sharp in its flavour, actually. But to me, it is more lemony and limey. Uh, and you do get the melon in there as well. But the melon's a bit more subtle, I think. Melon's not a fruit that I, that I would have overly often to be honest with you but I really quite like the flavour of melon the other hop of course that can give you these nice melony flavours is the Styrian Wolf it's got a lovely um, melony quality to it actually um, and that would be interesting to see them do that a, a triple hop uh, Styrian Wolf but um, yeah it's, it's a really nice beer this one I like how everything um, goes together It's this one isn't too dissimilar from the um, the original uh, the original Duvel, if you like. To me, it comes across as a little bit more crisp than I remember, as I was saying. Um, but also, the, the unusual things about this, obviously, are the melon and the limey flavour. So, this beer isn't quite as different as the Triple Hop Citra is, or I guess the Triple Hop Amarillo would have been. I would have liked to try that one as well, actually. 
by um, this beer, it does have a nice little bit more kind of fruity complexity to it. And again, as you would expect from Duvel, it's really well balanced, but it maintains that certain level of crisp drinkability that you would expect from uh, a Belgian beer, albeit it's more like a triple um, beer. This at 9.5 percent. But I like what they've done with this one. So for me, it gets a big um, a big thumbs up. They've managed to put everything together really well in this. But the differences, the kind of differences between this particular one and the original Duvel are a little bit more subtle for me compared with the, the triple hop citra if you like. I think that's a good comparison to make but the cashmere hop is um, is very very nice actually. If you like lemon limey flavours then I think this is one that you are going to enjoy and the melons just add a nice little bit of complexity to that. For me this is mainly a lemon limey um, Belgian blonde ale, if you like, or Belgian strong blonde ale, I guess we could say. Um, so yeah, it's it's like this one for me is like the original Duvel, but just a little bit more complex in its fruity character. Whereas I would consider the the triple hop citra to be a to be considerably more different than that, to be honest with you. And um, if that makes at all sense, but basically this is a nice beer, and if you get the chance to try it, have a go at it. If you get to try any of the uh, any IPAs. Now have cashmere in them, I think you'll see why this is becoming quite a sought after hop. Uh, in terms of the mouthfeel then, I would say that this beer is... Uh I would say this beer is kind of mid-bodied, pushing towards the top end of mid-bodies. Carbonation in this one is pretty active, and I mean in Belgian beers, carbonation is always a little bit more active because of the, the bottle conditioning. And, uh, and stuff like that. So carbonation will always give you a little bit more activity than well in others. I would describe the mouthfeel of this one as being a little bit oily but also kind of quite smooth and crisp. I think that's a fair thing to say. The malt base in this one gives you a nice little bit of smoothness but the yeasty qualities come into that a bit later and give you a little bit of sweetness in the middle of the palate too. The beer does have a good little bit of hoppy bitterness. I would think this one might be somewhere in the region of like 40 IBUs, something like that. Maybe th somewhere between 30 and 40. And the floral aspects of the beer, both from the, the Styrian Goldings and the... Um Oh, it's gone in my head. The Czech sats um, give you a nice little bit of a, a noble base to the beer, but then the cashmere, I think, is giving you a little bit more of a kind of spicy quality to the beer. So this one does have a little bit more of that kind of floral aromatic side to the green side of the hops, and that gives it a little bit more IBU, I think. And you've also got some really nice juicy but also quite sharp fruity characters to this beer. But overall, it's really, really nice. Yeah, and I'm glad that I was able to review this one for you. So I hope you guys have enjoyed my take on this one as well, although this feels a bit more like a a less kind of um, concise review or whatever, if you like. It doesn't feel, to me, this doesn't feel like um, I've gone overly into detail on this one, but to me, this is just like a slightly more complex version of the original Duvel rather than being almost a completely different beer, as was the case with the Duvel Citra. But it's still really nice, and if you get the chance to try it, I recommend that you do, even just to have a go at this original Cashmere, at, at the new Cashmere Hop, although it has been around for about five, six years now, actually. But yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. So this one was the Triple Hop Cashmere from Brarei Duvel Merkart in, uh, in Belgium. A really nice beer, this, and I'm glad I was able to review it for you. Make sure you pick it up while you still have the chance. But once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this one in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Duvel Murkat as well, and we'll definitely return to these guys in the fairly near future. Until the next time, Slange just now. I'll catch you guys later. Make sure you check out my social media. Slange, Skull, Proust, Santé.